Uh, this is for uh, technological reasons. Just uh, 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 stationary robots can work brute force because brute force in turn just they know where they are and uh, they are mechanically registered and constrained through maximum stiffness uh, to keep them in a range that for architecture is fine. As soon as you uh, let them drive around, then you enter one of the most complex uh, domains of robotics, uh, which is mobile manipulation. Uh, there is a lot going on, but, uh, and I think it will develop. Probably we'll all witness machines that can, interacting with the environment, do very complex things, but it's not there yet. So on the level of applications, you know, let's say in academy, there is a lot going on. But if I would be an entrepreneur, uh, you know, in architecture, I would rather use mechanical arms, you know, fixed to the ground to produce my parts because, you know, just pragmatic reasons. If the question is about do I like prefabrication, yes or no, uh, I would say I'm agnostic. There are things that depends on the material system. There are material systems that are, have been conceived for prefabrication, have been prefabricated long before industrialization from the logic, and others where it just doesn't make sense. If you do masonry, you know, and uh, prefab it, then you need to do a a, uh, a put rebars, additional rebars and uh, other uh, systems just to make them transportable, what doesn't make any sense. So it's just a workaround. And if you can do these things uh, on site, it's just more, much more sustainable and intelligent and uh, clever, you know. So there, is, there are reasons to, to engineer machines that on the building site in this dirty, unstructured environment can do more than just lifting, what is the state of the art right now, Hifti lifting and hammering and, you know, working with force. But uh, it's not dogmatic, you know, if there are things that can be done in a shop, why not, you know. It's always a matter of then uh, design, you know, if you are prefabricating things, uh, what is the case now in the logic, in our, you know, global, global logic, you don't even know it, but if you order something, you know, uh, that is maybe not even a, a, a nice product, this has been already three times, you know, in China and uh, in Indonesia and back and forth just for packaging, you know. Now this doesn't make sense, you know, but if you, by, by doing it, you know, somewhere else you can add a lot of value and organize it in a clever way, then it's a part of the design process to implement this. I think startups are our driver of innovation and uh, and very much linked to research because this is a pipeline. So the startup is not just money. If you don't have the people with the enthusiasm and the knowledge, you don't do any startup. You know, you, you can just invest. Uh, so for startups, you need uh, a creative environment. You need uh, a context. Uh, often it's universities or cities or sort of uh, biotops and uh, on the other side you have uh, big companies that also look into these things uh, it just uh, if, if you if you think of this company called Caterra you know that got funded with almost a billion of, of venture capital you know this dimension that uh, uh, 
But if you look at what they want to do, you know, it's not so exciting, you know. Uh, so it's not the same people that develop some crazy stuff, you know. This is a serious business, you know. These are managers and they just want to do, you know, to, to optimize the construction process. But there is not much more as a vision than full automation. And basically what they're proposing is to, to finally realize what... Uh, uh, Waxman and Gropius wanted to do after World War II, you know, <laughs> failing with it, you know. And eventually, probably, they will succeed, you know, but I think uh, design is, should go beyond, you know, um, these things. And these are um, easier to do in small, very dynamic, uh, uh, you know, and not only in architecture, you look in robotic, it's the same thing, you know. You have the big companies, you know, that eventually at a certain point buy up a company, but the real innovation is done in small small groups, you know, that are extremely daring and dynamic and uh, don't have to go up the chain, you know, to the super manager to ask if this is a good idea, but just do it. I think it's a share because academia has a certain, uh, you know, it's about the rules. In academia, you can do whatever you want because you don't have to be profitable, you know. They're profitable in terms of uh, ideas, you know. So academia is not profitable if there are no ideas developed. Uh, as soon as you go out, then you have to be profitable in terms of money, you know. Now money in a startup doesn't mean how much money you make end of the month, but it's how much money you get end of the year uh, with the promise of the thing that you're talking about or doing actually. You know, uh, but there is a reason why this is not academia anymore because there it's potentially about a lot of money, you know, and nobody invests if the, let's say, uh, the, 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 the IP and the property of this money is not uh, uh, clarified, you know. But nobody can invest a billion into university. This is sponsoring, you know. If you invest in a, in a startup, it's not sponsoring. This is venture uh, uh, in capitalism and means that it's high risk, but if it works, then you get a lot back. And, uh, and also liability, you know, and when it comes to construction, you know, why are we only at, in academia doing small pavillons for temporary, you know, two months? It's liability, you know, because as soon as you are really building you know, this stuff here, then you need to be a company. You know, can, 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 can be go bankruptcy and, you know, all these mechanisms. And there the distinction between the academy, academy and, uh, 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 let's say, private companies is uh, at, at, legal, uh, at legal level very, very clear. There is no blurry zone in between. This is a tricky question because it has two layers. One is, you know, our work is always a bit also subjected to a misunderstanding, you know, about automation. Because we don't talk about automation, but you can understand it as automation depending on what, uh, you know, perspective you have. So I would say there are different answers. One could be, and this is not the thing I like so much, you know. What the discourse we set up is used by many people and institutions and whatever to push uh, in automation. You know, that is exactly the opposite of what we say or claim that technology could do, you know, as a follow-up to industrialization. You know. and. Uh, at the same time, this is not so bad because this moves things, you know. This still obliges or creates a discourse, obliges thing, people to position themselves, uh, lets uh, people invest money, for example, and then can eventually generate something else. Uh, this is one. Uh, and on the other side, uh, but this is less, mm, let's say, spread, you know, because this is just a, a media message. This is more on the everyday, you know, contact with certain uh, people, contractor from industry, uh, where you 
start to create a network you know, of people that have an impact on the real world and start to understand certain things. And uh, it's about trust, for example, you know, if you do certain collaborations. Uh, and this will also change, change things, but not, you know, in a, on a mediatic level. It's more of a private, small daddy. But at the end, you could also argue that the world is always changed by networks, you know, because it's not only you and this guy talking, you know, but you and many others and this multiplies and uh, at the end of the day, you probably have a bigger uh, real change on things than, uh, than just by the narrative that is out there that is mis I mean, can be misunderstood and be a bit vague. Things are moving pretty fast. If you think of uh, how complex the industry we're talking about is and uh, how much it took, let's say, nine, in the 19th century to find a language to, for example, new materials where you could say it's pretty banal. You know, you have steel <laughs> and it took 50 years or, or, or reinforced concrete. It's a more complex material, you know, to, to get absorbed by the profession, society, culture, in order to, to produce, uh, have an, an impact on architecture that goes beyond just being uh, able to do it uh, bigger, faster, whatever, you know. Then uh, I think we are uh, uh, moving already pretty fast. I would, uh, if I go back, uh, it's not, I mean, it's exciting because uh, 15 years ago we were not really anticipating things like uh, you know, that this machine would get uh, more autonomy, maybe more perception, maybe even intelligence, you know. Artificial intelligence in 2005 was just not a concept, you know. It was a concept, but nobody was believing in it, you know. <laughs> it was around, being around 40 years and, uh, you know, without any breakthrough, and the breakthrough would come in, the, in these, exactly in these years, you know and uh, sensors that were prohibitive, expensive, and now you have them in, in all the devices you have around, you know, this is, it's, it's extremely productive. And at the same time, there is a lot, long way to go. Uh, I, I, would, I would turn the question around. I'm more scared that suddenly from, you know, we wake up in the morning and it's all there, but uh, we have missed to make, make a point. You know, it's all automated, it's all super hyper-productive, you know, but it doesn't make any sense. You know, this is a bit uh, the risk if we don't engage intellectually into these things. The risk is that it's, uh, it's not really making use of the potential of the technology, you know, but just replicating uh, what we already had. I was talking about this, uh, you know, apotheosis of modernism. But by the way, is a thing that uh, only few people recognize, you know, in the, the global discourse, for example, uh, 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 s urbanism in China, you know, this is nothing else than uh, the apotheosis of, uh, of, of modernism. So of the 30s, 40s, they're doing this, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not so visible, you know, but it's in a big scale. The same thing could happen with industrialization, you know, the point where we have they thought we have, we have gone beyond industrialization, you know, uh, in cultural terms, uh, then it could, you know, strike back heavily, you know. And of course, I'm ar arguing out of the, of, you could say, who cares, you know, who, you're just an architect that wants to do good design, you know, but we have been uh, suffering uh, uh, for uh, almost a century, you know, being obliged to use certain standardized process, not being allowed to talk to craftsmen anymore because it's too expensive, you know, all these things limiting the scope of design, you know. And if now it would be extreme, an irony of history, a tragic one, you know, if all this technology that could definitely free us up, you know, from all this, this constraint, we would put the super constraint, you know. Just for sake of profit, you know, because this will always remain, you know, I don't believe in this, uh, you know, this was 20 years ago, you know, uh, through non-standard fabrication, it gets even cheaper. It's not true, you know, uh, you know, 
complex things, beautiful things will always have, otherwise they wouldn't have value. You know, the question is only can you afford them in a culture or not, you know. But you will always have this, uh, this uh, uh, discussion and also fight between those who will sacrifice everything, you know, for money and efficiency and, uh, you know, uh, order and those who think there is more than that, you know, and defend this. Let, let's take a banal example, a CAD software, you know, that had been developed for industries that are much more powerful and uh, profitable than uh, architecture. And uh, we, or our, tra our, our profession has then been uh, basically forced a posteriori to adopt these technologies with very slight modification. Often it was just the name of the software, you know. <laughs> so architecture somehow came in the name, but basically were exactly the same tools that have been developed for mechanical engineering, so making really poor little sense, you know. Uh, and, uh, and now we could argue why. We could, one, one, one explanation could be we're just not interesting enough, financially speaking, for this software giant to invest, you know. Uh, but the other could also be maybe we just didn't engage in the discussion enough, you know, because basically we just didn't care until the moment when, let's say, the, the economic parameter around us were locked, you know, and we were in a situation where you had just two choices, get out of business, being Peter Zumthor or one of these guys, you know, or adopting these tools, you know, maybe uh, uh, not liking them so much but still having to increase your productivity, just drafting, so doing what you already did just faster, you know, and doing things faster is not really bringing us forward. We have to be very careful and part of this development on the technological, but also on the societal and cultural and architectural side, you know, and if we, uh, we leave this to others because we are not interested enough or uh, this, I mean, the question came from what, what is this scary scenario, you know, if we just wake up and it's, it has happened, you know, because then going back it's difficult, you know, because then power relations are established, uh, standards are there, norms are there, you know, <laughs> protocols are there and uh, to reverse or engineer, this needs a revolution then and this is not easy. You know, so it's better if you are, you know, pulling and pushing while this thing happen. And this is why education is important, you know, because the only people that, that talk and think in these terms will then be also able, if they are at the right point, position in the right moment, to, 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 to drive it in a certain direction rather than the other one.